In this video, I'm going over a few more examples of prisoners' dilemmas. In particular, whether or not to donate to charity, whether or not to go to war, the grading by the curve prisoners' dilemma, and um, friends apologizing. In my other video, I go over what is a prisoner's dilemma, and in particular, it's a situation where both players have a dominant strategy, so the Nash equilibrium is when they're both playing that dominant strategy, but both players prefer the situation where they both played their dominated strategy. They prefer that rather than the Nash equilibrium. It's just really hard to sustain because if we try to, to cooperate and be up here, both players want to defect, which sends us back here. And of course, economists refer to this as the cooperative strategy and the defective strategy, cooperator defect. But I'll replace those with the actual strategies in the situations that we're modeling. Okay, so the first scenario I'm going to do is the charity scenario. Do you or do you not give to charity? So let's imagine this charity is a local theater troupe, and you really like going to the plays, you like the theater, you want the theater to exist. But for it to exist, they're asking for donations. So your strategy is either to donate or to not donate. And everybody else in your whole town has those same two options. Now this, this matrix only has two players, but of course, lots of prisoners dilemmas have many players. So in this case, if nobody decides to donate, everyone chooses the strategy of don't donate, you don't get that much utility. Um, you, you would actually prefer if everybody donated. That's going to lead to a nice, vibrant theater scene, so this is your preference. But if everybody else chooses to donate, your best response to that is to not donate. So if everybody else donates, your best response is not donating. If nobody donates, your best response is not donating. So the dominant strategy is to not donate, even though uh, everyone would be better off if everybody donated. That's a prisoner's dilemma. So the second scenario is going to be a situation where a college professor has announced they're grading by the curve. The top 10 people get an A, the middle 20 people get a B, the bottom 10 people get a C, something like that. And so this is no matter what the scores are. So in this case, if everybody in the class agreed, nobody gets to study, um, you're just going to take the test without studying, and wherever you happen to land, that's the grade you get. So that would be a cooperative equilibrium for the class, if they can sustain this cooperative equilibrium. Um, now, of course, if everybody else is not studying, your best response is to study, because then you're going to be way above everyone else. If everybody else in the class studies, your best response to that is to study. So studying is a dominant strategy if the professor is grading by the curve. But, of course, the class would love to reach uh, an equilibrium where nobody studied and they all just got the grade they, they wanted. You could still get an A in the class if nobody's studying. So that's a prisoner's dilemma, because the best response, no matter what, is going to be to study, no matter what the other players in the room do. But everybody in the class prefers the cooperative scenario where they all agree to not study, nobody studies for the course, and the professor just assigns the grades. Studying is likely to just shift the equilibrium. That's a prisoner's dilemma because everyone has a dominant strategy, but everyone prefers the situation if they would have played their dominated strategy. Now, of course, that, that scenario assumes that everyone would prefer to not study. But actually, studying is benefit in and of itself. Still, the example's worth telling. There's the war and peace example. So you imagine a space where there's a bunch of tribes that each have their own territory, but of course they'd kind of like to expand their territory. And they can decide either to be peaceful or go to war. And if everybody else is peaceful, your best response to that is to go to war, because then you're going to gain territory, you'll be You'll be dominant, you'll kind of like that. So, best response to peace is war. Now, if everybody else goes to war in your territory, your best response is to go to war, or else you're going to be taken over. So, going to war is a dominant strategy. The Nash Equilibrium is for everybody to go to war. But, everybody prefers the situation where they all played their dominated strategy and everybody stays peaceful. But, everybody prefers the situation where they all played their dominated strategy and just stayed at peace. 
you lose fewer lives, etc., etc. Now, of course, you could change the payoffs here. So maybe one tribe just happens to have a lot of warrior types, and another tribe is weaker, in which case you might want to change the actual payoffs, and in that case it may no longer be a prisoner's dilemma. So all of this depends on the payoffs being similar to what's in the table. I'm just giving you some examples of things that might be prisoner's dilemmas depending on the payoff. Another duopoly example is the example where you have two firms that are competing and they could gain more customers by investing in innovation. And maybe this is beer companies they're investing in, trying out new different types of beers. Maybe this is drug companies that are investing in new research to come up with new drugs. It's any kind of firm that could benefit, could gain more customers by investing in innovation. So if neither firm invests, they just split the market in this duopoly. But if firm two chooses not to invest, firm one can look at that and say, oh, I should invest. If I invest in this new technology, everybody's gonna come to my company, we'll eat up the entire market demand, nobody's gonna go with firm two because we have a cooler product. So you do have to pay some money for that investment, but it's worth it because you, you gain the entire market by having better stuff. Now if the other firm invests, your best response is to also invest because if they invest and you don't, their product's going to be cooler, everybody's going to flock to them, you'll be left with zero. So your best response to each of the other two players' strategies is to invest. It's a dominant strategy. But both firms, of course, if they both invest, they split the market, but they've spent all this money on investment, so they get less money than if they hadn't, both hadn't invested. So even though the Nash equilibrium here is for both firms to invest, both firms prefer the situation where neither of them invested. They're going to make more money that way. This, this is just really hard to sustain because, of course, if they try to agree not to invest, sort of colluding behind the scenes, the other firm is going to say, wait, I should... It would be better for me to invest than I get all the customers. And so it's not really a credible threat unless, of course, it's a repeated game. Um, for example, you can have prisoner's dilemmas where you sustain the cooperative equilibrium in the long run if the game is repeated over and over and over for an indefinite period into the future. But that's repeated games. That's for another video. For now, this is one of the classic prisoner's dilemmas that you see with duopolies. Another friendship example of a prisoner's dilemma is a situation where you've had a bit of a fight with a friend, you've both said some rude things you both know you shouldn't have said, you're kind of angry and upset and offended, and you have to decide do you apologize or do you not apologize. And if the other person apologizes, they're sort of giving in and, try and doing what they can to reinstate the friendship, perhaps your best response is just to not apologize, in which case uh, you get a huge benefit, they've apologized for their bad behavior, you haven't apologized to yours, and you get the friendship back. So possibly your best response to them apologizing is you not apologizing. If the other person doesn't apologize, your best response might be to not apologize because you don't want to be the first one to apologize and when, when they don't apologize that doesn't feel very good. So depending on the, the payoffs, and of course these payoffs are not necessarily going to be the case in every friendship, but you could imagine two such people where these were the payoffs. So if these are the payoffs, then there is a dominant strategy for both players to not apologize. And the friendship's going to have some bad blood for a while, it's not as good. However, both players may prefer the scenario where they both apologized, and you've restored a, a greater degree of trust in the friendship. So if those are the payoffs, then we have a prisoner's dilemma where there's dominant strategy for both players, but they both prefer the situation where they both played their dominated strategy. That's a prisoner's dilemma. You see these things all over the place once you start looking for them, and they're really fun.